welcome to the Black Mind Podcast, the only podcast that doesn't appropriate Irish culture. Uh, Don't worry about it. Sure, sure. Yeah. We're not going to meme about the Queen. Yeah, that's all right to meme about. I mean, tomorrow's 9 11. I I'm think she's been mean. I mean, I already I mean, <laughs> it's been how long? Body's calls long enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The only part. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Right. I'm, I'm pretty sure. She could take all the jokes in stride no, even after like death. How she did. Yeah. No, I know she no, did. So, anyways, anger, let's introduce the hosts, and then we'll and then we'll proceed talking. Joining us this week is uh, the filthy uh, col- the colonist who seceded. Ben, how dare you? Hello. Filthy traitor. You, you, I mean, you fought a war, traitor. To leave her graces, how dare you? Don't abuse us. Don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll be having probably Civil War 2.0 yeah, eventually. Just right. Yeah, you will. Or not Civil War, uh, Freedom War 2.0. 2. <laughs> so, uh, it will be communists versus the Nazis versus actual freedom-loving Americans versus retards. Oh, God. You, no, it'll probably just be retards slapping each other. I mean, that, so, yeah. Because, I mean, we won't have any guns. I mean, did, did you hear what they did, what they're doing in New York with guns? Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, oh. Also joining us this week is the most non-political man ever, the the politicalist political lead, the man, Josh. the 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 man, the myth, <laughs> the legend, Josh. I know they do exist. Normal everyday Josh people. I, he he touched man. The man who goes us every time some something political starts. I just go penis. I just. <laughs> I go penis, 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 penis. penis. He Every goes time. outside, touches grass, oh. sends me an owl in a picture. I go outside and touch grass all the time too. Yeah, too. I'm like. Oh. I just also to, I joining us this week. Stand Do it. The, also joining us this week is uh, Alan, the man who is forced to touch grass. No, I'll be. I'm gonna be very short. Who is paid? So I, I gotta. I gotta dip. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna talk about the Queen <laughs> shit, and then we might talk about civil war. I don't know. Yes. Did he introduce Ben? Yes, he did. Or he called me the blank out. A filthy traitor. Yeah, he's a traitor. Left, uh, the Queen's I, Grace. Yeah. He's, oh, right. I he's not a, I mean, not, at this point, I don't think it was worth it anymore. He's not a British subject, so, you know. I mean, we're not a British subject either. I know, we're Canadians, but we we're still her subjects. Or, well, now the king. Yeah. Yeah. King Charles. Uh, the Queen is dead. Long live the king. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Queen Elizabeth passed away I mean, on Thursday. Tuesday? Thursday. So the podcast came out the day the Queen died. Um, That's what perfect. you're telling me. I found out within five, within like two minutes. Of the- yeah, I, I found out class. the same way. I literally woke up, picked up my phone, and then right it was just Queen's dead, Queen's dead, Queen's dead, Queen's dead. I'm like, oh. Yep. And um, yeah. so like, it's, been a, it's been an interesting time. I, I, I My condolences to the British United Kingdom for their loss because she has been such a rock for them for so long. She was like, the yeah. She was the queen mum, and I'm hoping, I'm praying, I'm begging Charles, hoping he just advocates. He just... Harry, Harry, people give up power? Huh? You mean William? I mean it's happened before. You mean Prince William? Yeah, William. Yeah, yeah. William. I don't. I don't yeah, think Harry. It's... But yeah, William. William's yeah, next. William's next. I think. Didn't I... William leave to the United States yes. though? Harry, Harry left Harry, to the United uh, States. Harry advocated. That's right. Uh, yeah. but Harry, uh, Harry was like Prince. He, no, he's not anymore. Yeah, he, he he's uh he's a uh his his I wife was a partly. Yeah. I am the thing that got me the most surprising thing about the Queen's death is the comments from other world leaders and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, there's a President Macron in France. He uh he he wrote his deepest condolences. He talks about like the Queen didn't look at French as a second language that she had had claims in France. No, she came to like she, I think France was like one of the most countries outside of like well, I think she visited mm-hmm. a couple of times over her lifetime, and she never just went there just for pleasure. She always went to 
just to visit them. Um, and like when he, when Macron's talk about her in his little, his little blurb, it's like a love letter. It's just like, no, he loves this country. Like our people don't lost of our English brothers over across the planet. I'm sorry, we lost. Uh, and then of course you have the American response and stuff like that. But the response, the one response that surprised the ever loving fuck. Let's see if I can mm-hmm. find it. I mean, I'll say this much. I think that a lot of the people, it's a tragedy of what happened and it it really is is a shitty thing. So, and, uh, I have, I have, I mean, she died like of natural causes, kind of ish, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, like, they had her in her home or whatever and like family showed up and then they were like all right she's dead i mean like it's not so much a tragedy it's like people die i mean i guess i'm a fucking nihilist realist but you know how dare you be a nihilist it's 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 a tragedy in the sense that this has been it's the end of an era and it is yeah it It is is the end of it burn charles uh or not charles can i say my personal opinion about this I, I was a little bit so, like when she said like when she everyone's like oh she's gone I was just like no that's a fucking lie she's not gone, and then I I I found out the news and I was like no there's there's no way, and then the best response I saw was um, my boss who is from Ireland seeing they're going well I'm really sorry that that happened and he just kind of was like eh you know I don't really like her I think that she was kind of a. Uh, Two timing, whatever we want to call it, whatever. And he was just very respectful about it. And it was just like, I'll probably go to the pub later and make some fake British accent in order to get some pity points. And it was like very respectful of him, like how he was kind of, he was trying to be as respectful oh, yeah. as he could. But, um, yeah. But, and that's the thing. It's like, I, I, if people are allowed to have, like, I, I personally think that right now it's not the time to, like, kind of rib at people. Mind you, the Irish are going to do it anyways. That's, oh my God. It's the Irish. Any anybody outside of Ireland, because I think Ireland has an excuse no, because of the IRA. They lost. They get what they deserve. Um, okay. Well, I think that I, I I'm just going to say this right now. I think that anyone outside of Irish Ireland who's ribbing on the Queen and memeing up her death, uh, you are appropriating Irish culture. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, You're appropriating Irish culture. You're a bad person. That's that's all I'm saying. I'm trying to I'm trying to find the quote from uh, Brazil's uh, Bolsonaro. I think uh, like he's the president of Brazil. Oh, is he now the, no, he's, yeah, president? He's the president? Um, and, oh, okay. and the way he puts it, um, she was an extraordinary and singular woman whose example of leadership, humility, and love of country will continue to inspire us in the world forever. She was uh, she was not uh, she was not just the queen of Britain, but the queen of the of uh, it's all and then officially <laughs> declared three days of mourning in the republic of brazil yeah like and then you have comments from like i know he's the big bad right now we have like comments from president putin just like no she was the rock of england and it's my deepest condolences that she has passed i wish her son the best i wish england has time to make the deal. and it's like the amount of outpouring support from you know, like political, political enemies, political allies, countrymen and citizens, it's actually genuinely like surprising to see he was below. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm like, it, it's sad because like, for like a lot of people, like they grew up under this. Like, they, she has been there for basically time immemorial. <laughs> we all thought she was going to be eternal, and it was just yeah. It's, it's just now. Well, she's gone. And the yeah. reason why I say and it's I, the end of the era, the end of this well, tragic end, it, big era. Mm-hmm. Is, yeah, she she had major political connections all around the world. England, like when uh, England England and the U.S. would fall out between the president and prime minister, where they bicker and have a falling out, she would literally invite the president of the United States to have a dinner with her and the prime minister and force them to make friends. 
and then send them on their way. She literally mommied political leaders, and it's fucking funny. Oh my god, like, this is a woman that... She held such massive power, but a lot of people don't understand that. Just... And now it's gone. Yeah, and it's kind of tragic. That she's just she was such a she was such an amazing person who did so much in her life too. you know you know it's funny a lot of people would highly disagree with you that she was a good person because there's a lot of people i've been seeing it like kind of all over the internet there's a lot of people that are like oh she was just a fucking racist glad she's fucking dead and that kind of shit it's like jesus christ uh, yes those people who uh, a lot of those people are just fucking salty that she was actually like a like a genuinely good person and i like they, they're like oh she was a racist it's like you mean you mean her? You mean the new queen consort? The, the new queen consort, who's a racist, and Meghan Markle, who is also a massive racist. R- racist. <laughs> like holy jeez! Oh my god! It, it, the, it, let me put it like this: This is what the queen did. The queen sat there and she goes, "She was a great. She was a great person." To everyone outside of the fucking like room and stuff like that, and she was a great mother to Charles. And uh, she didn't divorce William. She's one of the only people in the royal family who didn't uh, divorce. Who was uh, her husband again? Prince uh, or Prince Charles? I don't know. Was it Charles? No, Charles is the new king. Yes, Charles. Uh, I got to look this up. She was married to somebody. George. No, that was her dad. Charles III, Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. Yeah. Who, uh, who, was who unfortunately had passed. Uh, Prince of Greece, actually. Yeah. Um, but, like, um, no. Yeah. The, uh, the people who, like, who are really. Some Argentinian man on the news network, um, because the Arg- uh, the Argies fucking lost the English, they fucking get what they deserve. Um,. They, uh, this this man on the news tried pulled out a bottle of champagne and tried and popped a cart. Good, she's dead, and it was so forced. Like he didn't look at all comfortable doing. It. Yeah. And like the Argentinians, they they're they're just they're they're salty losers because they lost the whole port. Um, you're not getting the island back. Um, then of course you've got like like specific people in Africa and stuff like that, all races and stuff like that. Uh, colonizer, and I'm like, did, did you not understand? The British Empire effectively ended under her, under her regime, like under her rule. It dissolved like a very gentle accord. Yeah, it's again, I, like people are entitled to their pain. You know what? I'm don't let them speak their mind because they might be dumb, they might be retarded, they might be stupid, but they're allowed to speak their mind. Um, but. It's this massive ending of an era, and I think about yeah. it. I, I genuinely want to cry about it. But like it's, I just feel a little bit sad about it. Yeah. Well, I, okay. Here's a bit of here's a bit of a, a history for for Canada and Crown. Mm-hmm. Um, Queen Elizabeth considered Canada her. She yeah. Genuinely loved. Yeah. She would she visit, I think, 17 times over the course of her reign. Mm-hmm. And that's the most she's visited in any other country. Absolutely. Yeah. She would always be bright, happy, and wonderful about being present. It, and in Canada, we still, when we, when we, when we make our uh, oath of allegiance for the military and other sort of tasks, still. still Crown, not to the Canadian Constitution, it's not to the Canadian Parliament, it's not to the Prime Minister, it's, it's the Crown. It's the Crown of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth. Mm-hmm. So that's our ties there. Technically, still royal red. You've got this long lineage of being Beck and called the Queen. Same with Australia, same with New Zealand, same with um, Malta, Gibraltar. Falcon Islands, several dozen islands that people that the English would like to get rid of, but they keep voting to stay. <laughs> um, 
And it's just... It's it's a sad it's a sad thing. This immovable rock that had been present in the world seventy nine years, it's eighty six year uh, ninety six years, effectively seven years reign as rock of the world, and it's, it's over. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a shitty thing. She's gone. I feel so bad because you're saying all this, and I super just don't care yeah, anymore. No, I, 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 like when it comes to like world <laughs> leaders and like no, I, 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 uh, famous people like dying anymore. I I feel like everybody's just well, like well, this is people are oh, people, no, I, and I, I don't I, care. I'm, I'm, the same, I'm the same way with like when Robin William died. I, I didn't shed a tear. Like, he's my favorite. He's the favorite me at the time. I, he died. I didn't shed a tear. And um number of other famous actors that I actually like really enjoyed when when Mont, when Monty Ohm Bruce Chief died I didn't get it here but like this is the yeah. first time to be in like ever a like, long time like a, it's, yeah. it, to me it's like a grandmother died it's just, yeah. it feels... I was more sad at Monty dying because like I really loved his oh, series no, I, like I, all I did, of them I like, did too I, I loved it like he's the reason why I went to it was one... animation I, and he was like all of his stuff has so much passion and like amazing to it. I felt like it was such a a shame for such amazing talent to have you know been ended so early and not not like he because he was killed, but just because like he just unlucky, I guess in a way. But uh, just I don't know, man. Like some things are different, and like Robin Williams is just like well, it wasn't. I wasn't so much sad. It was more like, man, like that's just a situation that kind of just fucking sucks. Yeah. But most like global leaders and like other like hyper rich people, like I could give two fucking shits about. Oh, no, I, I, that's the same. For me, so, like, I guess maybe more if it's, like, I, I guess it might be just more that you're expecting America because you're. you're Technically, not as closely tied to it. You're still tied to it more than like most the other world wrestling. It's less of it. Also, at this point, I've been bred to not, to hate Britain and the royalty. <laughs> that, that, that's that's so, you fucking filthy fucking call. Uh, Basically, uh, yeah. No, but like me, I grew up her with her on my money. I grew up with her. Like actually, when I my first throughout most of my elementary school. Uh, years, because uh, I went to the base garrison uh, elementary school, mm-hmm. and um, we used to have a picture of me in the halls. That was always present. Her Majesty, Her Majesty's, it's like it's. A uh, Canada has that's the thing. That's the because Canada is so much closer to the crown, England, even the U.S. Even though we don't agree with always British or even agree with the Americans. It's Nobody should agree with Americans. Oh. Back to back. Yeah. You guys get it? You guys got your constitution right, but uh, it's probably a hot button debate right about now. Yeah, well that's beside it. I would probably say that it's Good, but um, it's one of those things that's like uh, it's probably outdated and needs help. And we're so stupidly attached to the past, I feel like we can't move forward into a modern era, which is super frustrating. Uh, I don't, I don't think giving up the past is, is the correct. I, think I don't that- know. I'm not, I'm not saying giving up the past. I'm saying that what comes to what we know is morally correct and well, or that's the thing. This, this, uh, it's the reason why the American Constitution has held up so well. You look at Bolivia, look at you look at all these other states that had very strong, but none of them stood the time. None of them. The American is the only one that stood stood now. Hundred, what seven years? Yeah. Two hundred. No, two hundred. I don't know. I'm I'm bad with math, so I couldn't tell you. Two hundred and six. A long ass time. Two sixty. Yeah. And the reason why it stood so so long at the time, even with even with amendments coming, because things you you can't foresee everything. But the thing is, is that 
the core of the Constitution has changed compared to things like Bolivia, um, Brazil, like all the other, like all the what other major republics in the world. Their constitutions are constant. American, American system. And I'm not. I'm saying that like there's some things that don't need to be changed. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying like directly change it. I'm saying like certain things need to be revised for the things that have changed. Uh, in what sense? I, like I, I, the I, I, internet. I'm curious. In what sense? I, I don't I don't want to say exact things, but like the way the information has been like revolutionized of being transferred oh, yeah. and such. That's- like there's some things that are our laws and like constitutional values don't cover. Yeah. Well, how could they even imagine? Exactly. So like I feel like instead of changing, it needs to be amendments in place yeah, no, to that, that, clarify yeah. in these situations. My, my, like, and oh, go ahead, go ahead, sorry, I'm interrupting. And that's and that's where we're failing because we're not we're not be able to keep up with the, the rapid growth of technology anymore, no. and we need and we need to be able to add in these things to help the judges under like then justify God, what is God and what isn't constitutional. The they have their work. I oof man, there's a lot of problems yeah. there in in some ways. Um, but yeah, that's a whole other topic. I'm, I'm just I'm just saying that not necessarily direct changes need to be made. I think addendums need to be either added or things need to be more properly Amendments. clarified. Like, like, like how yes. you, you guys are from what? Something like that. Again, I, I would have to actually like look it up to tell you exactly how many. No, there. I know just... slavery was abolished for thirty, and I think women's rights were eight. No, let's. And that was one of the last one. Last one. But like at the same time, to get to get the change to like, get a big change like that, and stuff, it takes. Look, I think uh, something that's very easily fixed or not fixed should be addressed. That very very easily should be addressed is um, bare arms amendment or whatever. Second. Because. Yeah, the Second Amendment. So that's one of those things that like needs to like have like a footnote added on to severely clarify what they consider is a proper arm to be wow. wielded by a militia. Well, uh, given no- I know my history, trust me, uh, they mean all weapons. Oh yeah, they they do mean all weapons. You mean all military weapons? Americans have the mm. right to nuclear weapons, man. Technically, yes. So you're so you're telling me literally any any yes. legally obtained weapon? Yes. Yes. You could buy a fighter jet and Hellfire missiles if you want. Yeah, yeah but you can't legally own one yes, of those in like anywhere. Yeah. Like, like, yes, you like, can. If you, like if I just went and bought a military grade yes, jet, you, you can't can. own that. Ben, if you wanted to, if you wanted to buy a, um, a jet and Hellfire missiles, you are allowed to buy a jet and Hellfire missiles. Yeah. If the then state why can't York, I, if the then state, why can't I go to my local Walmart and buy a M4 with that. a full auto? No, why would they suck a Hellfire missile kit? Yeah, well then I can't legally own one because you I can't. Can. Yes, you, you can. can. You can. You can legally, own yes, one. you have to go to the source, Ben. You can't. It's the reason why you it's have to go to the Lockheed the, Martin. It's the reason why the, uh, the Church of Scientology owns an aircraft carrier. They own an aircraft carrier. Keep in carrier mind. And they can, I see. Yeah. You got to keep in mind. Pepsi owned one of the largest. Uh, Pepsi owned one of the largest like fleets of weapons from the Soviet Union. They were ranked. I think it was the third biggest <laughs> navy in the world. And it was completely illegal. Yep. You just have. To- yeah, but as a yes. citizen, like you can't get those. Yes, items. you can. It's the You're why allowed why you to. Have, there are, this is the reason why they are privately owned F-18. F-15s and F-22s. There are a private deal. You know, actually, no, they're not. They're they're still under legal contract. With the government. So, um, but you can get you can private get private. It's the same with um privately owned uh, M48s and stuff like. That. It's the reason why you can buy. Them. You can buy That's a tank. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. They they're not. I mean, I know about the tanks because I've seen yeah. people buy literally purchase yeah. tanks. But like, ben, you can't t- legally drive a tank on the road yes, though. You can. Ben. Yes, you can. 
Well, you, you can't register a tag with the yes, DMV. You can. So if you get pulled over in a tag. Yeah, you can, actually. You got a ticket. No, you can't. <laughs> I've seen it. You can register for a tag with the DMV. I, I feel it. like you're fucking no, trolling me. There's We're no not fucking trolling way. you. All, the all of the laws that I know of you. literally says you can't own half of no. these things that you say I totally no. could. No. Um, ben, the government is just trying to sit there and take away your right to bear arms so that way they knew they don't want you driving a tank up to the steps and aiming the gun directly at the mayor's face. So that way they need, he understands that he's not in control. You're in control. That's what they want. They want you to be, they want right. you to be, oh, I can't own a weapon. Remember, oh, remember the, the entire- I can't defend myself against our massive amounts of thugs. Uh, oh. all right. but that, okay, that, that, that's a little... That's yeah, but the, the problem extreme. is, is like, extreme. I feel like, I feel I like know, if I'm I, to... like, let's say, okay, so let's say I, because I live in New Jersey, right? We have very, very strict, like, handgun yeah. and rifle also. You guys also have right? a huge fucking so, gun, uh, gun crime in my Don't worry, that's yeah. beside the point. Uh, only, only, in a, only in a few I, areas. Most of the, most of the places are pretty okay. Locked on New Jersey, you know it. Yes, I know. Camden is pretty fucking terrible. <laughs> but anyway, if I'm just like acquired, air quotes, a handgun outside of like the legal way, me going, oh, I have a right to own a weapon isn't going to hold up in court. I'm still going to jail. Oh, yeah. Yes. But that's the thing is like that. that that's the problem. Uh, states are overstepping the Constitution. It's the reason why yes. you've got the fucking Supreme Court kind of coming and taking fucking chunks out of New York and a bunch of other states by going, no, the Constitution yeah. is this. Stop doing it. It's the reason why they try to keep doing it. Now, I think the Supreme Court is actually too powerful. Personally. Like as much as I like, I get why they're doing the thing they are. But I think the Supreme Court is a little too powerful. That's that's yes. Um, but on the flip side of this, flip side of this, you should be able to, in any circumstance, with your you have criminal past or anything like that. I don't care. You should legally be allowed to get firearm for self defense. Mm-hmm. And you know what? You can legally own a cannon in all states because black powder weapons aren't considered firearms. They're not considered firearms. Yep. Technically, and, and the reason why, this is actually the reason why, like, uh, Second Amendment is so important because they try to argue, well, you can't you put own automatic weapons. And I'm like, no, that's objectively false because at the time there were automatic weapons in the 18th century. I mean, I can understand the argument for not allowing civilians to own weapons that have the potential for, like, mass casualties. Like, I, I can understand the argument for it is what I'm saying. But at the same – but, like, in the same time, I can understand that in in the ultimate, you know, p- uh, potential future of, like, civilians need to fight literal fascism. And I'm not talking about the, the like, the term that we've been using lately on, online and everything yeah, for they, what they, the, they, the American they, government is. True. Yes. Uh literal like fight your government th- there could be a need for a civilian to own oh yeah no and that's the thing is well that's the reason why you want to allow your citizens to be armed powerful with, weapons with, uh, access to those weapons and you know what you could say hey um uh just make sure the bill of sale is le- uh is legal that's it and i think that from also, from a general security standpoint, that uh, having a generally armed population, especially one as large as the United States, is a great deterrent for uh, crime in general, especially when it comes to businesses. I feel like business owners should almost have a ability to get like a business did license you, you, to arm the store and arm their employees while yeah. on the clock kind of see, thing, because that, that prevents robbery. That one, that one guy? The, the guy that had the black guy come around and like was literally like beating him down as he stabbed yeah. him or something. Yeah, that one. Like that's like that's what I'm saying. Like they should like I, stores should be allowed and almost in, encouraged I, to have armed yes. employees. It, it, that, that is that is that is the reason why the second man is supposed to be there. It's not just to have an armed militia. Because remember, the armed militia is supposed to keep the government in check. Mind you, um, President George Washington during his n- initial ten years as president had to send the army to deal with uh, militias that were um, getting a little zealous. Um, actually, like, with, after the end of the American Revolutionary War. Um, because they were... Oh, boy. They were... Uh, they were a bit, there were some militia groups that needed to be put down. Hey, that's... 
the idea of what the army is. And that's the point of the army. The army is supposed to be the official branch, whereas your militia is your average Joe armed with a rifle. And as much as a lot of people are like, well, you aren't going to beat the U.S. government with just fucking AR-15s and uh, automatic weapons. And I'm just like, yeah, but the Taliban did it. They did it. They did it. Yeah, you, you can. They did it twice, actually. And probably going to do it a third time with China. Yeah. And with the amount of, like, incompetency that is in our government, I wouldn't be surprised if a, if an, a semi-organized oh, no. civilian oh. militia could, could win hey, ground. Man. They don't even need to win ground. Um, so I have a buddy down in the states there. He's a he just he did a war game where they were just like, "How would you fight a civil war in the United States?" They, they did a little war game. That's all it is. And then eventually, he, he was playing on the defense of like Democrats or like a Democrat or certain states and stuff like that, with like ma- major population centers. And he was like, "The enemy didn't fight me uh, fight me straight up once. He hit three targets in every state, and I was just crippled because I couldn't do anything." Mm-hmm. And he, you know what he said? Because the big states that have all those huge population centers, like New Jersey, New York, California, Washington, D.C., well, their weaknesses are three things. Power plants, which are all, all outside the city limits. Water uh, water treatment plants, which probably are in, most are inside the city, uh, city limits, are also really easily seen. And mm-hmm. finally... Highways. That's all you gotta do to cripple like the east and west coast states. And hey, it, it's not like uh, most of, like again, it's a hypothetical. I don't. It might not even play out like that. It might even just be like done or lasted all of a, all of a month because it's just how big mm. things like, or yeah. stuff like that. But like it, again, it's the reason why the second man like. You need to have citizen arm. It's actually the reason why Switzerland was never attacked by Nazi Germany. It's the reason why Finland was such a problem for the Russians. It's the reason why, um, like, um, Afghanistan was such a problem for the Soviets and the Americans. Um, and it's the reason why, like, any time a government moves to take weapons away from you, you should always be very hesitant, to looked at, and squinted at, going, like, you shouldn't be doing that, you want your citizen arm. This is why I'm not happy with my current government because they're trying to do that too. And they're, yeah, and, they're not. And a lot of people are like, well, they didn't ban assault weapons in like, Nazi Germany. I'm like, well, no, actually they did because the assault weapon back in 1936 was the case. It was a submachine no, gun. No, it wasn't even a submachine gun. It was like the M1 Grand. They were no, basically no. single fire you know, rifles. You know what the assault rifle was? Oh, okay. The assault rifle was? Bolt action rifles. Sure. Ooh. That was what they wanted to ban in Germany. And they did. Mm. And then you had what happened. Same same thing happened in the Soviet Union. They banned they banned rifles. Citizens couldn't own rifles. Same thing happened in China. So you're just saying that we're we're following a really bad really uh, example, bad trend. huh? Um it, it's yeah, that's but again, we're talking I'm talking about politics and I need to get going because I go to bed. Yeah, um, so anyways, sorry, we're gonna we're gonna shift gears. I enjoy talking. I gotta go. I gotta get up early. Maybe instead of sending Jeff messages, I'm poorly you... equipped for this. No. So, I mean, I mean, that's trust me. T- talking to Alan has made me a better political advocate because I sit there and I'm like, yeah, communism basically leads to fascism, and then I get a fight on Facebook where it's like, do you mean that communism is basically fascism? I'm like, well, the re- end result is the exact same with 24 million people dead and famines everywhere and people dying. Actually, fascism actually works better than communism. Technically, because uh, I don't want to get shot. I want to go to bed. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, Alan. No, I, I appreciate I know, you. I know, I know, I know. Like I said, I don't want to talk. I don't want to get but it's fucking weird. Uh, yeah, the other it's time, stupid. I'm going to bed. Thank you for having me on, guys. Have a good night. Uh, it's it. It's good. So, anyways, Bye. Josh, have a good night, Alan. What? What? <laughs> Josh, you can finally <laughs> talk again. <laughs> oh. Fuck! Oh, I must be falling asleep. Oh man! In my, in my Eventually, we'll oh, get fuck. him political. We'll get him the drugs. <laughs> my and make him okay. political. <laughs> He'll be so happy. Oh no! Not the political. He'll be hateful. Ah, oh, fuck. Um, but yeah, I switch switch hard gears from political talk to I actually played a new you video did? game. 
What, did it yeah, have dicks I in play, it? I mean, it did could. you play I mean, Age Doom? Enough, uh, no, oh, actually, I played okay, another. Well, I'm done. Another Doom mod that's as good and high quality, uh, <laughs> but not dicks or sex. Oh. Sadly, it's called Josh. disappointing. It's called it's called Realism Two, and it's spelt weird. I have to go get a fetch a video of it because it's, it's simply a really good uh, kind of. It's not necessarily Binding of Isaac. But it's more of you get set in these random scenarios in an arena that you can choose from. And it, of course, it plays off of Doom and plays like Doom. But you're in this like custom made arena based shooter that uh, depending on the slot machine, uh, random scenarios you get put into, you can have scenarios of, OK, so everyone's skating on ice. Uh, you are a tank. And, oh, fuck, what was the third one? It was like, every time you shot uh, your opponent, they explode. So it was a scenario of like, oh, man, there's like 500 enemies on screen right now. I'm a fucking tank. I can just mow down as many things as I can. And they're exploding everywhere. I thought my computer might be on fire, but my my computer can handle it, which is great. You like those uh, games. And, yeah, I when things get absolutely video gamey, I fucking love it. It's just this like it's just chaos around you, and you're just like, what's going on? I don't know, but I'm I think I'm doing well. <laughs> like, it's those type of games I love. Uh, and yeah, in like in, in Realism Two, it's just like this cartoony, hilarious bullshit cranked up to eleven. And also there's a hub world to the game. So uh, so basically how the game starts is that there was a Realism 1. Realism 1 was kind of just based off the same thing of Realism 2, but Realism 2 just has way more stuff shoved in it. And I actually just say to play Realism 2 because you don't really need to know what the hell happened in 1. Because 1 does have a story and it connects to 2. But at the end of the day, you kind of just don't care. You just want to see shit blow up in weird, random ways. And... Uh, and yeah, like <laughs> the game has some very interesting story depth. The game has some really good interactions with the guns. You there's a fuck ton of guns in that game and a fuck ton of weapons in the game. Fuck ton of just a fuck ton of great shit in there. Uh, from my small bout of playing it last night, because I, I realized it was like two thirty in the morning and I was like, oh, fuck, I should go to bed. Uh. Basically, uh, one of the <laughs> hilarious weapons I picked up was a football. And I was like, oh, what the fuck does football do? You immediately start using it and you just charge forward and you just start killing things that gets in front of you because you're a football player. You turn to a football player, and you mow things down and you're like, cool, <laughs> that's what I can do. And then the next thing I picked up was a basketball. I'm like, what the fuck does this basketball do? What does the basketball Apparently do, Josh? What does the basketball do? God damn it. You can <laughs> you can pass to other enemies and it will ricochet off of them and it will do damage. Oh. Or you can do a slam dunk and fucking murder folks that Ooh. way. <laughs> you just like, made oh, you man, just this... made me interested. It, 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 it's pretty fun. Like I think this is like one of the more funner the funner games I've ever played. And I will put, put the err in fucking like sparkles and shit because, man, it's <laughs> it's it's fucking it's fucking great. I love it. It's it's on the almost, you know, stupid levels of like when you get to, you know, when you play Binding of, Binding of Isaac and you got all the DLCs and you unlocked everything and you just get to this level sometimes that you're like you're unstoppable killing machine. But yet you keep going like it's it kind of gets to those levels sometimes. Uh, now, the I think I have still have to play it more and there is still more things I have to go look around and take a look at, because the thing is, in the hub world, uh, there's a lot of NPCs you can talk to and they give you like story tidbits of like their life 
and how what's going on. And uh, in the hub world, you go and talk to uh, random, you know, like the, the wizard. Actually, the wizard is called the motherfucking wizard. But you go find his uh, giant palace and it's just called the MF wizards. <laughs> and uh, fucking you talk to him and he re he recognizes you from the first game. But at the but really is like he has his uh, bitch ass weapon that costs a lot of money. And it's like, oh, it looks like you really want this. It's like, OK, this is what you need to go and purchase. Uh, also, before a start of each round, you actually want to go and find these random NPCs that give you like these absurd weaponry uh, that can help you further your rounds uh, as you go on into the arena. So you can purchase bigger and bigger bullshittier guns. Which is interesting. I don't mind how this uh, dynamic works. Uh, and another thing is, uh, what was it? Oh yeah, the dog church. F fucking weird. I, I that's the thing. I'm just gonna say it's fucking weird. <laughs> it praises dog. Praise dog. <laughs> yep, this is all. This is all it is. It's, although there is a uh, dog hell. You have to go and find that though. I'm not gonna say where the fuck it is, but it's there. <laughs> you, and you don't kill like there's dog hell. You go, what's in dog hell? Only bad dogs go to bad, bad dog hell. And you're like, oh, only the bad dogs are killing. That's good. So <laughs> for a second, it's like, I hope I'm not killing good dogs. So good doggo. <laughs> uh, yeah. Good this doggos game, don't go to hell. Fuck. They go to heaven. Yeah, exactly. Good doggos go oh, to heaven. Oh, that's good to know. Ben, are you excited uh, that good doggos go to heaven? Yes. Although it reminds me of that movie from the 90s that makes me sad. <gasps> oh, it, it always, always. It's so fucking I'm sad. sad. Especially when the dog dies, and even though there's more movie to keep going, but you're like, fuck, that dog drowned! Wow! The, oh, the no! Dog, <laughs> the dog just died. Oh. Fucking, I remember seeing maybe, that. Maybe like, I'm such a fucking <laughs> skewered person. I'm sorry for cutting you off, Josh. But like when when uh -huh. my nephew watched that get movie for the first time, he started crying at the end. I smacked him across the back of the head and I said, "What are you crying about? Be a man. No. <laughs> Bottle of your emotions Freaking, until I, you explode. Yes, Be a man. That's 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 what you're supposed to do. Man up. You sit there. You you cry. That's showing weakness. You got to be an adult. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I, cry, I cry found before you go to sleep. Don't, don't yeah. only give me this, everybody else. Yeah. When somebody sits there and asks you if, you, if, if there's anything wrong, you sit there and you look at them and you say, no, nothing is wrong. And they say, if they say you're crying, you say, you're crying. Yep. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, Realism 2, I re highly, highly, highly recommend. If, you, uh, if Doom 2 is on sale, just get it. And find and figure out how and how how to install and how to play Realism Two, and you will have a great time. It, it's a little wonky to get that to work because you have to drag and drop two files onto the .dot uh, uh, exe folder to in order to make it work. But once you do, it, it works like a charm. Uh, but uh, yeah, like it's pretty fucking ball. It's a fucking amazing game to the point of. I wish I could play this on Steam so I could track achievements type of thing. Like I it like it feels like it would have this, but it's like it's not on Steam. It's not even as like a workshop download or anything because that, that, that does it's not there. I'm like, oh, fuck, I would so pay this person maybe maybe almost thirty dollars just right out of the box. Oh, it's on Steam with the ch Chivos. I would get it. Because I think this thing is so fucking absurd and crazy and great. <laughs> you would pay $30. I, like I would pay $30. That's, That's Canadian funny money. That's expensive. I, I feel disappointed in you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, but although I think if, if it was really good, if this like uh, the developer of the real, uh, realism mod like is going to make a conscious effort to put it on steam as like this own standalone thing he would probably may or may not have to ditch all the doom stuff but hey if i forget who owns doom nowadays is it it's fucking... microsoft owns doom it was always ed software who owned doom so if you owned ed software okay. you own doom 
Okay, so yeah, like I was gonna say, if they're fucking cool as shit, they would be like, find the developer and ask, hey, do you want to make a full fledged game of this shit? And like, you know, make it like full fledged as in like it's an indie title, so therefore the highest, you know, money you can slap on it is probably gonna be like 30, 40 bucks, but still it's like it has more shit. I would gung ho about it. So gung ho. Sounds like they need to I, uh, start a uh, Patreon and just make their own fucking game. I, it gets to that point of like, OK, you made this thing in Doom and you made it with all the assets and stuff. And it's actually there's even more assets that's not in regular Doom in this mod that just makes it funnier because there's stuff like the Kako demons just have Mario legs for no reason. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> you just you're fighting all these monsters and you see the sock puppet monster and it doesn't do anything, but you can murder them down. And so it's kind of hilarious. And they. You can set them on fire and they scream and it's, they're hilarious. But then you see the Kaku demons come out of nowhere and they have these fucking giant Mario legs. And you're like, what the fuck is this? Guy? What, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this game's hilarious. I, I recommend it. Go, go go download it. Buy Doom 2 and download it and play it. I recommend. Uh, but yeah, if like. I think this is one of the the best mods I've ever played. That's good. (laughs) Yeah, I think there's even more mods coming out that are just like using Doom and or like Source Engine type of stuff. But fuck, I I would have to go and dig out like a list of (laughs) I have to go dig out a list of uh, weird games that are doing that because it's like, oh, like these creators have these great ideas, but fuck, you think I would know where where these mods are coming from or something, but not really. Although sometimes uh. I feel like uh, it might just be better. Like, well, OK, maybe for old games, it's just make a new framework. But like some modders probably don't have the ability to make the framework of a game. So modding for them is just like better. Oh, oh no! That, yeah, and that's a lie because Unity Engine is free. They can make their own game very quickly. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that they know how to use it. I mean, it's or very to, or easy. Or they know bin. how to make art. Wow. Or they know. Or they know how to make. Well, art. Josh, you, you, that's called you go to Fiverr and you spend a Fiverr on three D models and you go, okay, I need, I need a gun. This is what the gun does. <laughs> yeah, but you're gonna have Jeff, like. Do you, you even have, do you Fiverr? have the money to independently dev a no. video game? No, I'm poor. Then how do you expect some modder to have the money to independently dev? I mean, they can sit there and set up uh, donations. Is that what I said earlier? Yes. They need to have a Patreon and make their own thing? Yes. But then again, like I'm saying, like, again, he, that that person in themselves might not have the ability to do do that. That's a good point. Yes. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm wrong. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm saying that, like, maybe you just understand the situation that they're in. I mean, here, here's my thing. This is my personal opinion. Yes. Um, oh. Oh, it's now showing. Oh, that's nice. Huh. Interesting. Uh, here, here's what I was going to say. So my personal opinion is that I think that, like, games like doom and stuff like that they're really good test bed in order to do development and then you can take those assets and you can or take the experience that you learn from games like doom or unreal or something like that that and port them into like an actual game engine like unreal engine 5 and make your own game and like just because you don't have the experience does not mean that like you can't learn it just takes time it can be a hobby that's what a lot of people use it for I also say they should probably use it for like test betting or prototyping something yeah. and then then make your full fledged thing somewhere yeah. else. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, at the, also, at the same time, it's like if you want to make this thing like really fleshed out, that, I mean, go for it. Nothing's stopping you from doing so. It's just at the end of the day, it's like if it, it just gets pushed over the limit. Like with uh, what was it? Brawl? No, yeah, Brawl M M two Brawl mod. I think it's called M two. Think so too. 
while I'm checking oh, something. Oh, uh, the, 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 the Brawl mod that was like the overhaul that they were using for tournaments or whatever, right? Yeah. Yep, that overhaul, like, it just kept adding and adding more shit. Yeah, that's and fucking shitty of them, though. They, they don't they don't produce the game anymore. They don't sell the game new anymore. Who the fuck cares if they make an overhaul mod for competitiveness? Who the fuck? Like, that's just, that was just scummy, okay? But it's Nintendo, so I, do you, are you even surprised anymore? I mean... No, I'm not. There is exactly. there is a specific reason why it's they kind of just... because they were they profi- the, profiting off of it. Because they were making yeah. money off the tournaments, which is the biggest, which was the problem. So if they just stopped making money off the tournaments, it wouldn't have been any problem. But the problem was that they wanted to make money for the development costs they were putting into it. So that sucks. But like they could have just done like something else, like done like, oh, we're going to have a Patreon for development. And then it would have been for, uh, for profit. It would have been for development. And then they would have been able to get sued over and had to get a cease and desist. But it's because they were making money I- off of running tournaments with that. That's why. Yeah, I uh, I just think that if Nintendo was actually cool or, you know, gave it to another developer or something, they could have ran with the torch and like actually probably made another cooler brawler, like brawl ask game that it could, you know, be on their system and make money or something. But Whatever, Nintendo be Nintendo. No, the, the biggest thing that Nintendo needed to do was not immediately go straight to lawyers. Or they might have gone to, gone to them and talked to them first. But they probably should have just opened a dialogue first. The fact is, is that they don't want their games to be known to be hyper-competitive. They want them to be known as party games. And so because there's this group yeah. of hyper-competitive people, they're like, oh, shit, we can't have that. And then they just don't care because fucking Japan and Japanese isolation is bullshit. Well, that's also weird <laughs> contrivance because competitiveness in Japan is also Japan, like Japan. Japan. Uh, they have competitiveness there. It yeah, exists. but it's, it's a different just for whatever level reason, than they are. Yeah, yeah. Because for whatever reason, Nintendo just doesn't think they want to go there. But it's like, no, people want to go there. You just can't think outside of your damn box. And that's that's like, the thing is they don't is there's no competitive Smash scene in Japan, and then so they only see their audience. They don't care about outside of their audience. Yeah. So they see their audience is internally Japan. I mean, I would argue that uh, they could also see other audiences across the world because they do have HQs other places, but it's just more of do they listen? <laughs> At the slightest, or do they do listen, or they and they don't care, or do they do listen and do try to actively, uh, 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 you know, do what we want in their weird way, you know, like it's one of those three things of like, do they listen at all? Do they listen sometimes? Do they listen and try to do something? And they just and choose not to listen I, at I, all because they think that they're right. <laughs> Pro- maybe. Who knows? That, no, that, that is what it is. Uh, I mean, why do you think there's I know that some of the some of the people that used to work for them, like I think Reggie was one of the reasons why he quit was because like the Nintendo Japan just like doesn't care about outside. Outside opinions. Yeah. And Reggie tried very hard to be, like, an outside opinion, but, like, they don't care about that. Yeah, it's not great. I kind of wonder, I mean, they've been around for years. They've been making money doing their own thing. But I kind of wonder why we'll break the camera's back on that. Maybe just old people leaving? Miyamoto dying. No, I mean, the problem no. is, is that the Miyam- general sensibility of, like, their companies versus American is different. So yeah. it's kind of like even if the younger generation slides up into that, it's not necessarily going to change anything because it's it's like the the thing about Japan is, is like you don't their general standpoint is don't stand out. So like even if newer people come up, they're going to hem the status quo because that's what they were always told to do. So nothing's going to change. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. So because they don't want to stand out because they want to rock the boat, they're not going to bother. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, 
Um, this is bad as China, where China their their current uh, motto is is uh, you know murder the Uyghurs, throw them into the oven. Eventually, the problem will deal with itself. No, it, it can't be. Damn, it can't be helped. Oh. Their their thing is like, oh, it is what it is. Like it's literally their entire population is like, oh, it is what it is. So they just ignore it. Seems like a really shitty way to live your life. Kind of is. Yeah. You know, I, I would still argue that there is companies that do listen. For, there there is, is bound to be a company. Yeah, companies in Japan that actually, you know, listen and shit. Yeah, look at Square. I'm At least sure. Square, like, actually listens. Like, I'm pretty sure that they've had a few uh, controversial change or decisions that they've changed fairly rapidly with, like, Final Fantasy XIV. Although that's usually only in Yoshi P's department. I feel like him as a director is, like, the, the, the absolute standout. Yeah. Like, I, I'm sure there's some outliers that uh, are actively listening to their consumer base and actually... You know, trying to get, get their consensus, con, con, you know, listen to them and like figure out what, you know, what the, is this actually what they want to do? Or is this like, oh, we got to figure out, decode the, what the consumer wants just so we can put it in there properly? Because, you know, a good example is like, uh, what was it, movie reviewing before the movie comes out? And it's like, and they have test audiences. And the test audience will watch an action movie and then one person will go, where in the fuck are the ducks? I want ducks. And then they and then everyone else goes, yeah, I should have ducks in it. I don't really want ducks. But th- th- it goes back to like the people who are making the movie and go, should we add ducks? I don't know. Well, I'm sure if we add ducks. And then so they take these small select section of people who want ducks. They'll add ducks to the movie. Making it worse, and then put it out thinking that's what people want, and it's like no, this, people yeah, it's don't that want ducks. weird one dude that was like, "Hey, I kind of want a duck." Yeah, I want a fucking duck in this action movie. And it's like no, that's not what you're. It's not how this works. You should take their consideration and be like, okay, what is he actually meaning to say? I want ducks. It's like, is it because? No, is it because like it's too boring? Is it because oh, is this a thing I just like? And maybe some guy should have a duck shirt, and it'll just calm that guy down or something. Like, what what is he trying to say? Like, take him in consideration. Don't take it a hundred percent, because that's that's a downfall. At least that's a downfall of terribleness. I think because I'm sure there's movies that went down that hole that are <laughs> it just went out being worse. I feel like one of the problems <laughs> is is that um. Uh, artistic passion, I guess, doesn't really exist too much anymore. I, uh, I mean, that kind of exists. Come on, look at some of the, the fucking newer games that come out. Come on, you think there's passion no, oh, in those? Uh, actually, it, no, no, no. I'm talking about indie titles that I only stare okay. at, not necessarily the fucking AAA <laughs> shit. Because you go to indie. Because you go to the left side and you're like, oh, that's people with active have visions for what they want and they go for it and it's great. And you go to the right side where it's AAA and it's like, oh, this is white toast as fuck. Like, yeah, that's that's a true <laughs> statement. <Yes. laughs> as somebody who, whose cat has a little bit of experience and has people, yeah, that's completely oh, true. Because they're like, you're like, you're like, why don't we rock the boat? And they're like, well, consumers want the exact same game over and over and over again. And it's like, uh. No, no, (laughs) not necessarily. No, if anything, you should rock the boat at least once just just so you'd be like, oh, you know, here's a new flavor of ice cream because everyone likes a different flavor of ice cream. (laughs) You should at least change it up. It's like, you know why everybody uh, wants the same game every year? It's because you brainwash them into wanting every same game of the year. Fucking look at FIFA. Like, it's literally all it is. Or yeah, FIFA and what was it? Any it wasn't no, it's not NHL. It was what was the other sports league that people were start realizing it was just Madden. reskins. Madden has been a reskin yeah, since like 2017. There's the same engine with the same graphics. Nothing and has they changed. Even forgot to take out. They even forgot to take out some of the skins to change the gear. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It was there's uh, things on the like sideline for like the Super Bowl that they just didn't remove. And it's from the, yeah. the Bicentennial or whatever of the, uh, or not Bicentennial. It's one of the anniversaries, like in 20, yep. 2014, yep. they didn't remove from the game. <laughs> oh, that's funny. 
Oh, that's so funny. Fuck. Be a sports fan. I know, oh, being a sports God, fan in 2020. I mean, the sports games were cool. There was actual arcade games that go with sports and like there was Wayne Gretzky sports and NFL there was Street. fucking NHL hits and there was NFL Street and like there was actually cool arcade games for them. And then th- fucking EA just bought them all and ruined it for everyone. Actually, it's not even entirely EA's fault. It's NFL. It's the NFL's fault. They It's like an exclusivity it's- contract that they have with EA. To make yeah. the only only make games. That's why ESPN and something else can't make games anymore. Yeah, <laughs> fucking Christ, you, the biggest fuck up possible. Yeah, well, that's what happens like, when you make a billion dollar game. Oh fuck! I I really think someone. I know they're just full of fucking normies that don't understand technology and then think fire's oh, bad. Well, they're all business but, people, oh my, Josh. They're, they're just. They just need to make uh, yeah, money, Josh. Yeah, yeah. They, they just they love sitting there and they go. No, no, they know fire's bad. They don't want to touch the fire, but they should have at least one fire person on their team to could be like, hey, probably shouldn't do this. I mean, Activision this. Blizzard is probably also really bad about this because they just release Call of Duty and it's the same Call of Game every year. Uh, I mean, Call of Duty is a little no, weird and different. No, it's not. Every I mean, single is, year, Josh, they're always like, like, they're always like, we released the new Call of Duty. Computer, it's going to be it's the computer. so different. And then actual it's, Call of Duty fans go, oh, they changed the gunplay. And you're like playing it. And it's like, no, this is still right trigger, left trigger, shoot. It's the computer uh, version of sports games. It's the eSport. Sort of. Anyways, can we talk about, can we get uh, Ben ready to like fucking like blow my brains out with uh, rage and anger oh dear what's that I mean if you alright go for it I guess so Halo Infinite allows Forge and they're they reveal Forge and they're like oh you guys can make prefabs you guys can make your own maps and you know it's gonna be great and everyone's like ooh fantastic happiness joy and and uh, they also announced that the yapping event, so people are now playing the game again. And uh, yeah, Halo Infinite might be turning a road. Q six months later, when Jeff goes, Halo Infinite's dead. Uh, but uh, yeah, they apparently. Truth. Ju- what? You're saying the Halo Infinite is dead? That's the truth. Yeah. So uh, Ben's Ben's probably going to agree with me. He's going to be so happy. He's a happy boy. And uh, he's uh, probably uh, static by this uh, statement. Uh, but Halo Infinite Forge looks good. You can make your own Forge maps. And it looks like uh, you're going to be able to make your own horde, horde mode and everything like that. So you're going to actually be able to have zombies and shit. So it actually looks like it's going to be a pretty good mode. Hooray. Hooray. It took him long enough. Oh, no, uh, it's a, I think it's too little too late. Yeah. Dead game is dead. I love how people keep trying to tell themselves that Battlefield 2042 is okay. Um, man, it's it's not okay. Let me okay. see what the Steam charts say because it's it's been a while. It, oh, uh, 24 the, hour peak 9k. What's the 24 hour peak on Halo Infinite? Uh, I will tell you in a second. If it's if it's oh, it's that <laughs> bad. Six and a half. That's not that bad. It's Battlefield 2042 is was the game uh, almost 10k, and Battlefield Infinite is half of that. How is that okay? That's fine. It's just one console. It's just PC players. The same for Battlefield 2042 as well. So you're probably looking at best, let's say, like 15K for Battlefield 2042. And if you apply the same, like, kind of, like, relativeness, you're looking at maybe another, like, 3,000 players. That's still only 8,000 people at peak. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. So, anyways. Um... You want to... I don't know. Is there supposed to be split screen? I heard there was split screen. 
Split screen co-op is canceled, but it's in the game. It's oh. literally in the game. Oh, oh, it's in the game, but it's, it's canceled. It's literally in the game. There's a glitch that makes it work in the game. Yeah, but they're not. They're not gonna release it because what? three what? for three is incompetent. Piece well, of shit. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. The former directors were idiots. But you know what? We're going to get Forge, and Forge is going to save the day, guys. It's going to be the greatest mode ever made. They're going to make daily challenges to Forge a map. Hooray! Yeah. Totally wanted mm -hmm. that. Yeah. It's going to make the game like, so much better, okay? It's going to make this game so much better. <laughs> it's going to make the game so much better. Ben, I'm retarded. I don't, be I don't believe it for a minute. It's going to make the game better. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, ben, did you play any other games or anything like that? I got Crusader Kings 3 today, or this week, and I've been what? playing that a bunch. Oh, good for you. Are you enjoying it? I am. I put two days into that. I was playing it quite a bit, actually. Oh, ain't, aren't you happy? You're a happy boy, aren't you? I do like Paradox uh, 3X or 4X games. Uh, I think it is incredibly difficult in some ways because I'm still learning it. Um, the biggest problem I have is is that when your leader dies, oh, if you have too many sons, it's just a fucking problem. <laughs> so it's just like, man, I fuck too much. I have a problem. And it's just like, well, I can't control that. And then it's like, but there are some solutions. Like, you can just get your sons killed on the battlefield, which is pretty funny. But, um, you know, I was like, oh, well, all, all my kids did beat up my land and want to overthrow my rightful heir. And I don't have an army to do it anymore because they split up my entire land. I don't have the money to do it anymore because they split up my entire land. And then it was like, okay, well, what do I do? It's like, well, I guess I'll just kill my brother and steal his crown. It didn't work out for me. Fair enough. I tried, man. Okay, what can I say? But anyway, I've been just spamming Ireland over and over again trying to learn the game and, like, figure things out. Like, I didn't know that you could specifically train your kids in specific ways until, like, my third playthrough. And then... That also, like, their traits determine, like, what they're good at and shit like that. So, like, again, like, I didn't understand this game at fucking all. Hmm. It's been an interesting uh, adventure, as to say. It's been an interesting adventure watching the, um, your, your literal lesion fuck yourself into obscurity and fuck mm -hmm. your... Yeah, that's, that sounds about right. Yeah, because in the beginning of the game, it's like it's early like medieval shit. So like you don't have the ability to directly select errors and shit like that. So like if I have a shit error, I can't do anything about it. And I just have to either put up with it or just like make the most out of it. Sounds about right. And uh, so like you have to like wait like like centuries, not like literal centuries, but you know what I mean. I have to wait like several, several bloodline you know father sons later to actually like have complete control over my kingdom and like that obviously le leads to some difficulty but uh i don't know man it's just hard also i played conan exiles again because they released their magic update and that's like was a lot of fun mm -hmm. so you had a conan uh, yeah you played conan exiles and it was a lot of fun yeah there's magic yeah Magic is fucking weird in Conan, especially because, like, they've kind of linked magic with corruption. And corruption lowers your health and your stamina. Well, before it just lowered your health, but now it lowers your stamina as well, which, like, kind of sucks. So it's just like, oh, I now have 40, or I have 55% uh, HP and stamina at all times now. Sounds about right. I don't know, it just kind of sucks, because, like, they added in corrupted perks, too. So, like, the more corrupted perks you take, the more you're locked into corruption. So you can't cleanse the corruption anymore. So, like, if you could cast sorceries and then cleanse the corruption, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But if you take corrupted perks, and the corrupted perks are really strong, you then can't cleanse your corruption, and you're stuck at 50% HP. So it's just, like, you get hit, like, by a boss, and you just die. So it's really it's really risk versus reward. Sounds about right. So so that game is just like risk versus reward the game. 
kind of okay. So like, imagine Rust, but more fantasy. Rust, Less but more fantasy. Sweaty. Mm. Yeah, it's 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 a sandbox survival like server based thing, and like you get a character per server, and like you build bases and like survive and learn shit and level up and like there's RPG mechanics. That's what I was saying. Like there's corrupted skills, and it's just like, but it's very like melee heavy. Yeah. And it has, like, an action kind of RPG, like, melee combat to, like, you actually do, like, combos and, like, dodge and shit. No. Oh, so, like, it's not like arc where, like, you just kind of run on something, just mash left click, you know what I mean? Okay. So, so, uh, so, it's, a, so it's a better video game. It's a good video game. Mm. I think it has its flaws. I think the base game rate of, like, gathering things is fucking awful. Um, the old skill system was like there was stuff the stuff that just was useless like being an archer in the game was literally worthless oh. and now they divided the weapons because all weapons just used, all melee weapons used to be strength and all ranged weapons used to be agility well the agility tree was fucking trash nobody used it and so they're like oh well if nobody uses it let's just rework it so when they put out their corrupted trace they reworked the entire system and they split melee weapons into agility based weapons and strength based weapons so like great swords and maces and stuff are strength weapons where like daggers and bows and um there are katanas in that game and katanas are agility weapons so like the agility tree is more about like ducking dodging and like attacking from behind where the strength tree is more about being the berserker okay so they made it so like you can actually facilitate two different play styles and then not you know have one just be absolute dog shit that you don't take and then the one tree that was like amazing that everybody always took they just kind of condensed it into what was good and then just left the tree alone oh that sounds about right yeah so they're like oh well there's a couple of places that suck balls and nobody's ones so we'll just kind of get rid of them put in some new ones and then make the ones that everybody loved in there as well and then that was it Oh, that sounds cool. Yeah. So, and then like, and then besides that, the only thing that I have a problem with is that it takes forever to like gather things. Like, so recipe costs are absurd, like ridiculously absurd. Uh, like to make like a furnace, to make like base, the base game like make iron is like five hundred stone. And every time you hit a stone block, you get, like, five. Okay. So you have – and the stone block disappears eventually. So you have to run around and break stone blocks, getting five stone blocks a hit. And they maybe have, like, eight hits in them. And so you get 500 stone. And then you're probably so over-encumbered that you're, you waddle back to your base with 500 stone to put down the one smelter that starts smelting the iron that you need. And then to make the blacksmith, to make the weapons that you need, you need 50 iron bars. Well, <laughs> it's two iron ore per iron bar. So then you have to then find the iron, walk it back to your base, and then smelt it up without fucking dying because you drop everything if you die. And then it only gets compoundingly worse because then to make, like, steel, you need steel fire mm-hmm. and iron ore – or and iron bars. And so the steel fire is, like, brimstone and tar. And in order to get tar, you need to – dry hide and brimstone is a mineable resource so it's not that bad but still it's like it's one brimstone it's one steel fire for one steel bar Hmm. and then you put that in the in the smelter and then it smells it down in the steel bars but then like to make a weapon is like 25 steel bars so you see how it gets like progressively worse and worse yeah it gets it just sounds like it's bad and then they get like end, and then some end game items require some, something that's called like alchemic base. And alchemic base requires gold dust, silver dust, and um, spider icker. So you have to get so you have to kill spiders to get the icker, and then you have to then you have to find gold. And gold only drops from not from like loot where like you get like gold coins or gold bars is from all the way in the north of the map. By a fucking volcano, you have to mine obsidian, and then you have a chance, like a, I think it's like sixteen percent chance to mine a single gold ore. Oh, that sounds lame. And then silver ore is like there's specific places where it spawns, and you maybe get like twenty. 
that sounds you even need stupider. Hundreds of alchemic base to make things. So okay. like the the end game grind is in the fucking tense. So I refuse to play on official servers. I only play on servers with increased rates. And you don't have to increase it by a lot. Like three times is usually enough. Hmm. But I will never play on a base rate server. It is fucking awful. That and playing on official servers is even more worse because people can like raid you and break your base down and just like rob you of all your shit. So you can play for an entire day and then just come back on the next day and your shit's just gone. Oh, that sounds even awful. <laughs> yeah, it Josh, does, it does that, sound pretty awful. Josh, does that sound awful? I It's not great. It, I have to add, I'm sorry, I'm kind of in and out of conversation, but is this multiplayer or is this It's player? multiplayer, yes. Okay. There is... And yeah, that's there, kind of bad. There is, like, story and stuff. It's really, like, discovery-based. Like, in the beginning of the game, it's like you literally spawn in, and then it's like the like thing just goes, you know, like, find... Inte- it's like literally the first thing it says is find intelligent life. And so, like, you find, like, a... There's, like, maybe, like, within, like eye shot of you like in the direction that you spawn you see like a tablet sticking out of the sand in the desert and when you walk up into it it like invokes like a message into your brain and it's the there's there's, there was apparently like a race of people that like enslaved people in this desert and like you're apparently like the newest slave or whatever right because of this bracelet you have on and then like you kind of you pick up like a journal off this dead guy that you know ended up here by accident and you know you kind of follow down the trail and you can pick up another journal and then eventually like then then there's nothing else then it's just like literally just explore and look and shit and find other pieces of lore and other of those giant tablets like scattered through like this barren wasteland of a forgotten civilization fair enough that seems pretty Yeah, cool. like I think it's I think it's a cool story set in like the Conan universe. And like if you don't know much about it, I don't even think you need to know much about Conan to like understand like the story of the of the area. But it's definitely one of those games like if you don't want to interact with the story, it just doesn't exist. But then like if you actually bother to like look into like the lore of the things and like find like other lore pieces, there's a lot of it there. Sounds about right. Cool. Is that a podcast, guys? Sure. Josh? I, I think so. There you go. So thank you, everyone, for listening to Black Mind Games Podcast. You can listen to us every Thursday at blackmindgames.podman.com. You'll subscribe to us on your favorite podcasting app of choice. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Alan. Have a good night. Bye. Stop my, stop my recording. Okay. Uh, my friend Alan, not not this Alan. What's up, bitches? <laughs> so, anyways, I'll, I'll rephrase the story. Alan. Okay. Uh, my friend Alan, not not you. Okay. Me and him were having a fight, and and by fight I mean it's more along the lines of me saying they're going. I I don't know what's going on anymore. I didn't think that this was a big deal. Mm-hmm. Josh knows the story, but I should have I should have clarified that it's not you. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I told it last night. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, I set up my friend Alan with a girl. I'm like, oh, it's going to be great. You're going to have a great time. She's a great person. You know, you can go on a date. You know, fun. And she goes, okay, cool, great, fantastic. So they go on their date, 
And I'm like, okay, how did it go? Was everything great? Everything's fantastic? Eh, 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 eh. I'm happy for you. Everything it, was not fantastic, was it? Well, I get a message from the girl, and she goes, oh, he's so sweet, so nice, everything like that. And I'm like, oh, that's good. Everything's great. Fantastic. I get a message from him, and he goes, she doesn't have a dick. Oh, my what? God. I get a message, and he goes, she doesn't have a dick. I don't know what to do. doesn't have a dick? Yeah. I didn't think that was a requirement. Now I feel really bad. I'm like, did I fuck up? Did I fuck up? Your response should be, are you me, or are you actually? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I can't, um, my man's was disappointed. I guess. I, 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 I don't. <laughs> hey, you know what? He got. He, he, apparently, he got enough action to get to fucking find that out. So he apparently, <laughs> well. Apparently. Um, also, I'm not going to be on for very long. Guess I'm on so. Stuff. I'm going to go back. I got to be on for Oh wow! What? Talk, what a talk about what the a, queen now. Okay, well, anyways, let's sink. In three, two, one.